First of all, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan fikum. Ma'akum Sakharat bin Bishr, Mudir Maharajan. Sakhayim bin Fulun Basariya. Wa ma'aya al-yom, Ji Young. Hi, my name is Ji Young and I'm the event specialist at Sheikh Saru bin Sakhar al-Qasmi Foundation. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the Creative Dialogues, the Art of Fragrance. We are delighted to have with us today, Ms. Amna al Haptur, founder and the CEO of Arcadia by Amna, and Mr. Saeed al Dawaymi, the co-founder and the CEO of Library Marash. So let us start. Thank you very much, Jill. So to start on, so uh, my first question would be, uh, to begin with the conversation, what is this, uh, the simple uh, you know, questions that I would ask? What is the favorite scent that I would ask for uh, Amna that you, know, you would use for your perfume? Well, for me, it's all about the mood of the day. So there are days where I'm feeling where I want to wear something lighter. There are days where I want to go heavier, more floral, more, you know, powdery. So it just depends on my specific mood. But I really try to go for more of the Arabic sense because I feel like that's where I connect to more. Um, if it's not a full-blown perfume, I just put a little bit of a roll-on of a little bit of oud, which is the um, derived from the uh, oud wood itself but I make sure that it's put very lightly, very lightly, as it is a very overwhelming smell. Mm -hmm. How about you, Saeed? What's your favorite scent? Uh, to me, I go with seasons. So in summer, I go with citrusy uh, fragrances. And in winter, I'm very picky with, I'm, I love patchouli and the cardamom. Mm -hmm. So those are my favorite scents. It's a bit different than others, but uh, those are my favorite uh, scents that I use. So which, which scent are you wearing right now? I uh, know I'm going with citrus as the weather is very hot. <laughs> so I'm going with citrus fragrances. All right. Okay. Well, now to more serious questions. So why did you choose to be a perfumer for Amna and I guess a collector for Saeed? Um, Amna, you want to start? Um, well, for me, it just it was a passion project to start off with. Um, I started working with the family business in the beginning, and I kind of wanted to elevate myself more from that, get away from the typical corporate, um, you know, industry. I wanted to, to be more creative. I wanted to set my own rules, and um, I felt like perfume was the perfect um, place to start as. You know, it's uh, something that everyone wears. You know, um, you can connect with a lot of people with perfume. People often stop you and tell you, oh, what are you wearing? And for me, it was this, the, the main project that I had worked on before, estab uh, before establishing Arcadia was a scent that I created for my wedding. Mm. It was based on my personality and my husband's personality. And based on that, we created a fragrance that, you know, just complemented both of us and um it gradually started from there and for me it it started off like after after it had started off people were like okay this is something that you kind of have a hunch for so why not go for it you know started learning about it more started studying it uh it became more of um you know, I, I learned to love actually creating scents myself as I learned how to do it while establishing the uh, brand. And uh, and that now so far so good. It's been uh, it's been quite uh, great. Congratulations! <laughs> we love it when you know a passion project turns into business and you can do both at the same time. How about you, Sai? Um. It, it came out since young age. We are brothers. Uh, we're four brothers. Three of them are perfume collectors. And uh, I have my big brother. I remember when we used to travel, uh, we used to go to London, US. We used to buy fragrance when we were small. We, we were limited with the budget with, my, with, the, with the father. So we, we go and buy some fragrances there and we collect them. So when we grew up, we started collecting until we, 
like 2015, we reached out. We have like uh, more than 1,000 fragrances to 2,000 in our uh, in our one of the rooms that we have in our house, and we distributed the, the same thing you see at the, the shop. Uh, and then people came in also and said, uh, "Why you don't go out and start something?" And then the library, uh, the scent library, came out in 2016. Actually, I, I, I hear the story from Agna that you used to learn how to, to use some fragments from uh, like your, Annie, from the family. Somebody from the family used to do some fragrance and some wood and stuff, and you learned from that. And maybe that was the story that maybe started that thing? For me or for Saeed? Yeah, for you. For me, yeah, I mean, uh, it starts off with uh, all of our aunties, you know, our grandmothers as well. They make the um, bakhur pieces, which are the incenses that we burn. You mix oud, you mix a lot of amber, musks to it. And unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to learn it, but I can replicate it as a scent. But in order to create the oud, it's something that is like passed down from generations to generations. And each family has a specific way of creating their oud as well. So no one's going to give you their secret. Just I learned that the hard way, obviously, through trial and error. But um, yeah, it's just kind of like a trial and error that has been passed down from grandmother to mother to daughter and then something that hopefully I'm going to learn and pass down to my kids uh, in the future, hopefully, if I can crack the code that has been so secretly hidden in the Arab industry. But uh, alhamdulillah, so far so good. I mean, with our family, some people don't even do it to create a business out of it. Some people nowadays have been creating home businesses, recreating their bakhur that they've only left in the family for so long. And some people don't even sell it. They say, if you're worthy enough to have it gifted to you, then you're one of the lucky ones, you know? So it's, it's really interesting how um, they'll give you all the ingredients except that one that you really need to actually create the perfect scent. I mean, it's, I think it's very interesting and exciting to see how both, you know, Saeed and Amna, you guys... Um, I guess your passion and your love for perfume really came from this family, you know, um, traits and something that you guys used to share together that turned into passion and then into a business. Um, so I know that, you know, for like Saeed, you have a library and you, you curate your sense into different notes, correct? Yes. So um, what is your greatest source of inspiration when creating this library and curating your space? I know that it like what you said, it, the collection came from your house, but now to actually um, move that into a business, where, where does your inspiration come from? So from collecting, we saw something was lacking from the perfumery market. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to implement something new in the market that is coming from UAE. And uh, to be honest, uh, why you see the library and the distributed like this? Because we want people to go inside our stores and buy what they like not what was preferred from the uh, team inside the store. So that's why it is distributed through this uh, sections and sense. And uh, in, in regard with the design of the store, uh, I want it to be, um, I always, I love traveling. This is part of the thing that you see the bricks, uh, the piano, everything is connected to the perfumes. Also, we have a coffee shop, which is, is connected to also the, uh, the perfumes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love smelling yeah. coffee and scents. So it's like a mixture of a lot yeah. together. <laughs> That's why, because uh, coffee, uh, I don't know if people know that perfumes, you have top note, middle note, base note. And uh, why we introduced coffee to the stores is because uh, you drink coffee, let us say, cafe latte, it has the foam, milk, coffee. What stays in you is the coffee effect. And also the perfumes, what stays in you, the best note. It is not the top note, middle note. So always when you're thinking of buying a fragrance, don't buy it in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Just you need to take your time. Um, it takes for you to, from 30 minutes to two hours. I always say that uh, because you can smell the top note, middle note, and then you maybe you buy a fragrance today in five minutes, you go home, you don't, you don't like it because you smell the top note that you liked it, but then the base note have 
have a different taste. So that's why we, we have introduced everything. Also, when, when it comes to the piano, buying a perfume and having this musical playing every time, it gives you a different vibe in the stores. Mm-hmm. And uh, the team, that they don't force you in buying a fragrance. They just was trained to make you love what you are buying. So this was our aim. Mm-hmm. How about you, Amna? I know that you know, you're a creator of scents. So what, where, where does your inspiration come from? For me, I think it's more of when we decided to, well, I decided to create Arcadia. I wanted it to resonate a little more with feelings, with nostalgia. There's so many scents that um, I've tried to recreate, but tweak, obviously, that had reminded me of my childhood. You know, my inspiration came from my late mother, who used to, like Saeed said, you know, us Arabs, we all love to travel the world just to get our hands on the latest, you know, Guerlain perfume or Creed or you name it. I mean, we used to literally, first store we would go to is a perfumery store, grab what we could, the latest in the 90s, early 2000s, and then bring that all back with us to Dubai. And uh, it, it was just a fun, fun project. And I think what inspires us now are just to kind of recreate these memories that we kind of lost, I would say, but try to kind of regain, retouch on those points. Um, you know, uh, with every scent, we have a little story behind it, a narrative. Um, they all resonate with something that I've actually gone through, but hopefully people can resonate as well with it and, you know, uh, have a connection to it or just even recreate your own uh, memories through scent. I think we take scent for granted sometimes that, um, you know, we, we just want to, it's like traveling abroad and then coming back home, you have that sense of, oh my God, the smell of my, my home, you know what I mean? So that's, that's something we tried to recreate. And I, as Saeed was saying, yeah, it's so easy to go into a store and navigate to look exactly what you're looking for. And the smart thing that he's done as well was you can spray the perfume on a abaya, on a kandora, and on a regular t-shirt. So you can see how the sense sets with that. And I love that aspect about what he did with his store. It's really, really cool. Wow. So whoever hasn't passed by needs to pass by. <laughs> that's a very interesting relax. That I, I tried this before actually. Whenever you try uh, the sense and, and the different, even skin, different skin actually has a very different tone. Mm. And yeah, which which was very interesting. So actually, I'm gonna go to my next question, which is, uh, uh, you know, since. Uh, you know, since it's an um, important element of the UAE culture, uh, could you tell us about, you know, you know about uh, an important element of the UAE culture? Could you tell us about... Could you tell us a bit about, about it? More and, um, you know, like about the UAE, like in general, about the perfume in the UAE. What is it and how much could you, you know, how much element and how much is it important in the United Arab Emirates? I think at the end of the day, it goes down to hospitality and culture and tradition. This is something that's uh, in every single household. I think Saeed will agree with me. Men, women, you know, we have our, so I don't know how you guys do it because each family is obviously completely different, but we have our oils. So you'll have the musk oil, the amber oil, the mkhalat. The mkhalat is usually a mix of different oils to create a specific scent. And each household has different types. So one could be mixed with rose and oud. One could be mixed with rose and uh, musk or musk and amber. So you have those different layers. They come in huge jars. And um, as people are about to leave, you always have to make sure that they've used some of those oils. You know, we bring the incense out and we bring the bukhur, which is the incense you burn. You also bring the um, dry oud, which is the agar wood. That's mostly men use. I would, I don't know if Saeed would agree with me. I use it personally because I really, really like it, but some women prefer the oud that is soaked in oils as well. 
and we call that Oud Ma'attar. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I, I think it's I like just the, his, like historical. <laughs> yeah, and for men, I, I prefer it as well. And what, uh, and, what do you, oh, wait, go ahead, yes. Yeah. And you know, I need to add something good. I mean, you know, those things that uh, those elements that we grew up with. So the Oud, we I since I was young, uh, when we go on Fridays we to the mosque, we, we just need to put them in uh, the Dhuhn al Oud, and this is something that we know since like my grandfathers, and then it was implemented, put in fragrances too. So uh, what I see is perfumes was. Uh, like in our cafes a long time ago, uh, but we made it a bit differently, but we still use the same element that our grandfather have used, the oud, the dhan oud, and the other things that have been used. So what yeah, is... I think as generations passed, we've kind of modernized it in our own way, but keeping the main yeah. tradition and culture behind the each and everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So what do you think the scent how does or the, the scent of the UA culture, what does that represent to you as an Emirati? Well, I, I think it's something that we're, I think we're very proud of. And as Emiratis, if anybody asks you what perfume you're using, I think Saeed will agree with me. We say we layer. We can never give you the exact name of the perfume that we're using because we'll be using citrus on top of oud and the oud and, uh, essence, that the incense that we use on our clothes just to smoke it up so even if I was to tell you oh these are the three perfumes I used you will never get the scent correct because it's like Sokrat said as well uh, earlier that your DNA affects a lot of how the scent is going to smell on you yeah I mean I actually find that quite fascinating because I mean obviously I'm not an Emirati <laughs> surprise mm -hmm. um yeah and then I think you know I've been living in the UAE for the past five years and I think Amna had mentioned how scent cre um, creates nostalgia and sometimes when I travel outside of the UAE and then I just suddenly smell wood I'm like oh home because you know I've been here for so long that I don't realize that I have this um, I guess connection nostalgic connection to wood and these layers that you talk about with the UAE and I think that's something so specific and unique to um, yeah. the culture here. And, and what's happening is the oud this makes the perfume stick on your clothes. I don't know if you know this information. Mm -hmm. So it, while putting the oud is you need to spray fragrances while the, the smoke is coming out from your clothes. And this is something traditional we learned from our mother, grandmothers. That this is what they usually do for my grandfather. And it's really, now I'm still now I'm using this and hopefully I, I will let my children learn that also. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I think it's quite surprising that I, I just, I saw my friends use puhur on their clothes and then they would put, um, spray perfume on top of that. And I was like, that's too much scent, but then it works, you know, like the layers work. And I think it goes really nicely to the next question. This is specifically for Amna. Um, but what, how does the process of making fragrance or scent work? So maybe a bit of technicalities? There is a bit of technicality that goes to it, but I don't like to set rules when it comes to creating a scent because um, you have the right way and then there's a way that you honestly feel like it will go. Like I said, uh, we have a knack for scent as Arabs, you know. We know what works together because we use such overwhelming strong scents. I think it's also an acquired scent, you know, uh, not everybody will like oud the minute they smell it. Uh, and to go over the process, well, for me specifically, I kind of think of the actual scent that I'm looking for. So let's just say today I feel like choosing a fruity scent and I'll base it off of that and the scents that kind of complement um, uh, fruits. You know, do you want to go for a more sour scent? Do you want to go for a more sweet scent? And then you have different ingredients of what to put in. So there are some musks, for example, that complement very sweet, fruity um, ingredients that work well and balance everything out. And you can't use a different musk for that. So there are different layers and different components. And um, I think you just have to kind of 
know what you're smelling, know what you want to put together in your head. And it's obviously through trial and error. You're never going to get it first the right time and you'll never know when to stop. But um, I think it's, it's, it's something that you kind of note down. Again, like I said, trial and error. You have to know what kind of uh, oils you're using, whether they're the correct oils or you know, high quality oils. So it, it really depends. There's no like yes or no, right or wrong. Actually, I have another question, which is very interesting for me. I want to know more about three things. Where does the amber comes from? Where does the root comes from? And where does the amber root and uh, musk? musk comes from? Which Should I, I let Saeed answer that? Which, uh, a I will answer people, that. which a lot of people do, do not know, Yanni. <laughs> which I, I think is part of the, the Arabian yeah. I think uh, I think I, I don't remember. I think the amber is coming from the uh, I forget the name. Al uh, with the uh, whale. So the whale, yeah. Amber uh, comes from whale. Whale the whale vomit. Whale vomit yeah. to be specific. And it's no worth a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot. Wait, but and how I, do you I think even... that's interesting, right? Yeah, like how do you extract it though? Like, do you like wait? No for... one extracts it. You just wait for the whale to get to sick. Vomit. Let's just oh. say. <laughs> All right. Mm. And then you have the the so that that's amber. Then the musk. The musk. So where does the musk come from? From the glands of a gazelle. Huh. All right. <laughs> but now we use we use synthetics at uh -huh. the moment. Yeah, like I, a lot of people use synthetics now because you know you don't want to harm the animal in the process of that. It's it has to do a lot with ex extraction. So we've kind of stuck on the synthetic side of uh, retrieving that specific uh, mm -hmm. scent. Let's All just right. say. And the wood comes from a specific type of wood tree. Food tree, all yeah. right. Which is very interesting. Ah, wait. Yeah, that is that is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I did not because not, not everything is like an ingredient, because a lot of people think it's like an ingredient to make something, which which I think this is why I was I was trying to explain to a lot of people, especially when we have like groups of people coming. And I have to explain to people that a lot of things that is actually coming from Mother of Earth, you know, like most of those are coming from the earth, the, those, those, but it's, of course you have to chemical it, right? You have to make it to some chemicals. It goes through a, uh, uh, an extraction process. For example, the rude wood that we burn yeah. is actually the, the tree itself. We wait till it is, um, well, until the bark of the tree is actually rotten. And what we use is the rotten wood which creates the smell that we get from the root. Mm -hmm. wow, okay. And that goes through an extraction process and we get the oils from that. I don't know the technicality of how it's done, but yeah, it's, it's a very long process because you have to wait for that tree to mature. You have to wait for that. It's like a bittersweet ending to the tree. You know what I mean? You wait till it grows, you nurture it, you love it. Then eventually, but now they actually add that bacteria to speed up the process so that we can get root wood faster. And this gives you the dehen root? That gives us also, I think it goes through an extraction process that get, gets us the dehen root, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. I don't know, Saeed, or am I yeah, mixing up the, my... The root that you have mentioned is the same process you have mentioned, but the dehen root, I think, is uh, someone at uh, with the, the same distillation tree. it's called the distillation yeah. uh, i'm think. i'm going to be Saeed's translator today <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, it goes through a distillation process but keep in mind so there are wood trees that we, that grow in cambodia grow in india grow in the philippines some grow in japan and each has a distinctive scent to it they don't all smell the same due to the environmental factors that uh, the tree has grown Oh. So when you create oud um, that is produced here, do you 
extract those scents that is very specific to this region or it doesn't matter? It depends on the types of scent that you guys are creating i think it, it it doesn't really matter actually it just depends on the specific scent that you're looking for there are different uh -huh. types of oud you have uh like i said Cam cambodian oud oil indian oud oil and um the longer uh, you know you keep the oud the better it smells so mm -hmm. it could be years years from now and you can still use it so my great grandchildren can use my oud wow if, if there was any left. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> so I, I, would, I would move from that and all of those very, very interesting questions to what challenges have you both faced in setting up your companies? Let's start. Oh, so you go first. You go <laughs> first. <laughs> uh, what is uh, your see, the thing is, uh, when we started, we started with a small table in 2015. Then it came out to a store. Uh, we implemented a new idea. And this is how to convince people. Uh, the, when you're implementing something in your new experience of selling fragrances, you need to convince people. When they see something in you, they're not used to it. It is hard for people to be convinced to buy fragrances. This is part of the challenges we have faced for years. Until now, we have noticed, alhamdulillah, and everybody knows what we are doing. The second challenge is the COVID situation. Alhamdulillah, we have survived this situation. And uh, I think there will every person in this earth have, have been affected in COVID and also businesses. But I always give an example of uh, clamping a mountain. If everything was easy, everybody will be uh, successful. But Climbing a mountain, it's not easy. So when you climb a mountain, you fall down, you go up, you fall down. And this is part of uh, the entrepreneurship. So I think uh, you need to work hard and uh, face these challenges. How about you, Amna? I think it was just the whole idea to create something very unique to the region. Um, I wanted to stick out. I didn't want to stick to the rules. And um, my main goal was to bring an Emirati product made in the UAE worldwide. Uh, setting up um, did have its challenges, but nothing that actually stopped us on the way. And I think it's just the passion to run for what you want and to hustle and to keep moving in you know, there were a lot of doors that were closed in the beginning because a lot of people didn't believe in the product as much as I did. Um, you know, you just have to push. I feel like there's so many people that will try to, you know, not really like kind of push you down just to say that you're not as good enough as the international people that are out there. But I kind of uh, fought that, you know, and I'm glad I did because, you know, it's helped me be in places now that are kind of I wouldn't say worldwide but we're we're in very particular places you know I still haven't covered the full world that I want to be in but you know we're in Japan we're in London we're in um, the U.S. and um, I'm proud of my country I mean why can't we do it yeah. you know yeah. why does everything that come from the UAE have to be not as good as the European countries or the Americans or whoever it is. I mean, we're, this is what we are known for, our fragrances. This is what we created and sent out to the world. You know what I mean? So if we don't do it, who will? Um, yeah, I mean, I do agree with you completely. You know, for me as a foreigner, I did not know that, you know, the Gulf or the UAE was so into perfume. I really did not know that until I came here. You know, because usually when we think of perfume, we think of France, right? That's like the first country that comes on top of my head. But actually, you know, after coming here, I'm like, no, like the first country when it comes to perfume to, for me is the UAE. Like, you know, nothing, you know, the elsewhere, you know, nothing about France. <laughs> I want to add on uh, things on what Amna said, mm -hmm. which is products that are coming from UAE. See, as a retailer, I deal like with around 60 countries, uh, more than one sixty different brands. Uh, 
I am very proud of what Amna and Arcadia have reached, really. And also, COVID, when COVID came, we saw a lot of product that was spread worldwide from Arcadia. Mm -hmm. And this is what I always tell people. If you believe in yourself, you can achieve it. It won't be easy. And uh, to me, I see Arcadia as a very, very nice brand uh, that I can compare it with very, very big brands that I carry in my stores. So this is, makes me as a local proud of that there are locals that do some product in UAE and they're worldwide, you know. When I go like expeditions in Italy uh, and I see those local brands, I, I will really be proud that there are some products that are coming from UAE to Italy and people are taking it to spread it worldwide too. So thank you, Amina, for this hard work. Thank you, Saeed, because you've been our number one supporter since day one, actually. So we go way back. He's like a brother to me at the end of the day, you know? You. <laughs> That's really nice to hear. We actually have a lot of questions yes. coming from the crowd. So maybe... Gian is going to do the questions. Yeah, so I will go through them. This is because this is, yeah, we have a lot coming. We have questions from the audience. Yeah. So well, let's start with the first one. Um, so I guess this is... Maybe this could be for both of you. So, or what kind of sustainable practices, um, or how do you incorporate sustainability practices in your perfume creation or practice? For us, we use reusable resources, our papers. We try to package everything in pouches. Those pouches can be reused. Uh, we make sure that our bottles are reused. We've created a campaign where if you bring back your bottles, you get a 20% uh, discount off of your next uh, purchase. You know, we try to use as many natural ingredients in our products. Um, we are also against animal testing. So we stay away from parabens, uh, sulfates. Uh, we've recently launched a new candle line. We've made sure that that is completely soy so that it doesn't affect the environment as well as your own household. And um, yeah, that's as sustainable as we can be as a UAE product, because it actually took a change from being in very lavish boxes to actually toning it down and actually thinking about the environment. What we have done is created a small step in society where I hope a lot of brands will follow and you know try to reuse recycle and be you know environmentally friendly hopefully yeah and okay so to the next question um so maybe this is for Saeed how do you select the individual elements for layering I know that you cur curated your space with different notes of um notes of fragrance so how do you match the spray to the smoke and everything else in the individual layers um, you mean by choosing perfumes or by uh, uh, layering it, spraying it daily? I think just in general, like layering scent. Uh, to me, uh, we have, uh, I layer things based on fresh notes and uh, and uh, like oud and citrusy. I, 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 I don't mix anything together because sometimes they don't fit together. So you need to know what, what you're mixing. So you can't uh, mix anything that you, you see because it doesn't click together. So for me, I don't mix a lot because the only thing that I mix is the wood and the citrusy. So this is what I usually do only. I don't like layering. I love layering when I do before only, mm -hmm. which is it gives me, a, I love to select different brands rather than just layering fragrance together. So... You know, as someone for me who does not have that many experience layering or like with fragrance, given that, you know, I didn't grow up um, with this kind of, you know, are there any tips or recommendations that I should be aware of when I am layering you, certain scents? You need to try them out. So, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, we also introduced something in the store called Ratio Three and One which is if you don't like anything in the store, for example, and you want something very special, you can layer fragrance. So that's why we call it three in one. So if uh, a spray from powdery, 
plus three sprays of those cities, it gives you a very good combination. Mm -hmm. And this is the layering part that we usually do. But as personal, I don't like to layer, but it is very good for people who, to, who wanna be very selective because perfumery is uh, one, um, it's like 10% discovered, still 90% didn't discover in regard to scent. So you can create your own scent. You have 90% of creating, you know, there are a lot of smell that you can uh, create. Uh huh. All right. So to another question, I think this applies to both of you and even Socrat. Um, traditionally, are the secrets of food making passed on from a mother to a daughter or from a father to a son? Food making, as in like making the bukhur itself. And I think does it, but then does it. Does it I think it matters because I, I take I, my dad's perfume there's a perfume I, that my dad used I use it till now yeah. I think it's a personal thing so it's basically we learn off of our the older generation right yeah. and you can differentiate what you like from what they've used and what we use nowadays and Based off of that, I think um, you kind of create your own path. But it's because perfume is so personal. I feel like you can't... There are things that I like that maybe you guys won't like. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's it's, it, there are different tastes. It just depends on how you want to go about it. Like for me, it's a very moody thing. For Saeed, it's a very, you know, it's a very seasonal thing, you know? So it really just depends on people. I think it just depends on everyone's uh, preference. preference. Uh -huh. Yeah. How about you, Said? Were there any secrets of sense that you learned from your parents? Uh, from my dad, I only have a one, one fragrance, which I still remember when I was a kid. So, you know, I think Amna can say because the perfumes is memories. So when I smell any fragrance now, if you give me any fragrance, I can remember you the moment that I smelled it. Like for example, I know a fragrance that I don't like now, but I know that it takes me back to COVID when we were in lockdown. So, oh gosh. <laughs> so, so th those are the things. So for me, um, I love to be very selective, but I have some fragrances that I uh, love it. But it reminds me of my dad, and that's why I use it again. Yeah, yeah. I would think like uh, I I agree. Uh, there's a, a, per a perfume that my mom used to use. I cannot pull it off but it reminds me of her. So I don't necessarily have to spray it on myself, but I do spray it around the house because it just doesn't suit me whatsoever. Yeah. It's Angel by Terry Mugler, the sweet oh. one. And, and, it, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I, I, I'm the opposite. I have, I, my dad, I used to love uh, the obs, Obsession by, I think it's called Obsession, or Obsession by Calvin Klein. That's my dad's, yeah. which everybody used to use, and a still order yeah. by my mom. I will never use them, but when, <laughs> whenever I smell them, it's like mom and dad are there, mm -hmm. you know? But, but I think there is this thing that actually, it's, it's like, it's just a memory. And I, what, what I think nowadays, our kids will never have this thing because nowadays there's a lot of perfumes going on. And they cannot smell the thing that they, the old generation used to have that one perfume when they used to come and they used to have that. It's a story actually, mm -hmm. which is very sad, you know, like, you know, like they used to have that one perfume, like Rufin Linda and Rufin Khan, and this is their, their perfume. Very bitter, it's bittersweet, like we yes. said earlier. Yeah. yeah, and they used to, like, one Sarah Shtarid Hal Atar, bring me this perfume. And nowadays, I think class, it's, it's, it's dead. You know, that class, just bring me any perfume. Whatever is there, just get it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that that's a very good question. Yeah. I mean, what is your, what is your mom's perfume? My mom actually doesn't like perfumes that much. So she actually doesn't use them. No but, cologne? No, not really. But I, I do agree that, because I am quite sensitive to scent as well. So 
I think my mom has like this house scent, you know, like, I guess it's like the laundry. It's yeah. not, it's not necessarily the cologne that she uses, but I think it's more like the laundry detergent and the scent just of the house. So, um, because I don't live with my parents, um, well, they're like abroad. So then whenever like I go back and then come back, I bring my clothes that are washed in my house. And you smell it. Yeah. And then when I come back, I smell it and then it makes me really sad. You know, it just makes me very nostalgic. So comfort. Exactly. Yeah. Comfort. Ex exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, yeah, I think, I think like what Anna said in the beginning, scent, nostalgia. And I think scent also has a very, if they have a personality, you know, they're very unique. Um, yeah, so I think this is when you're making the next question is, um, how can you distinguish between a high quality oil and a low quality oil? Or I guess, yeah. You, you can't, it, they're, they're different prices. So it just depends on the, the, the thing is, it depends on what your budget is as a perfumer, right? So some people will go for the higher quality. I'm not saying that anything is wrong with using a lower end um, quality, but it's, it, it all depends on your budget, what you're creating. Um, there are some that do differentiate with the scent. So you can have a very high quality of Indian jasmine oil and the, a very low quality of it, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad quality. Just keep in mind, they're just very different. Mm -hmm. And the way that it's cut, distilled, you know, the oil is extracted is, is just different, but that doesn't make it a cheaper brand or a less of a value kind of thing because you have different jasmine oils, you have different parts of the patchouli that you can extract. There are different parts of white flowers. We can go on and on and on. So just because one is higher than the other doesn't make, doesn't make your scent better, just FYI. I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have known that, you know? Yeah. And I think it goes back to the uniqueness of each scent, of course. Um, well, I guess this is for Saeed, since you curate your space with different perfumes. Um, what is the best smoke note, smoky note? What would you uh, recommend? See, it is my favorite in winter, and uh, it is the charcoal smell, but yeah. not the charcoal, yeah. But the, the the one you smell, you know, when you're in uh, in winter, we go to the desert, we do some barbecue. This smell, and uh, I love one fragrance. It is uh, from Imagine Authors. He's a is a very good friend. He made a fragrance called uh, uh, City on Fire. And this fragrance, uh, yeah, you, you need to try it out. But this is talks about a very good smell of smoke. Because when you say smoke, you think that it will be the smoke that you don't like. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, this is the best thing people buy. And uh, I won't say it's the best seller, but this is the perfume that always people recommend in winter because it smells very powerful and it has a different type of smoke. And it, I think it is coming to a smell of a charcoal. This is what I remember. All right. So it's city, called City on Fire. City of Fire? Of Fire. Yeah. City, uh, city on Fire from Imagine. On Fire. On Fire. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next question, are there certain types of oud that are used specifically for wedding occasions um, as it is found with some people? Or if there is none, then I guess there's a person maybe wants a recommendation a type of oud that you can use for a wedding? You, you would just have to go to a store and have to kind of look for what you, what you prefer. Because again, uh, like I said, each family likes different stuff. Even your guests will like different stuff. So it just depends on, you know, your personal preference. You can go to Ajmal, Abdusqamad al-Qurashi. Yeah, they have really... أظن حط طالب yes. سو حط طالب النعي عنده عرس بس we want to recommend شو نقدر نحطي في الأعراس as in spray يعني عطور يمكن لا يعني ممكن نحطي شو نحطي في ال في الأعراس what do you recommend as in myself like what I would spray on yeah يعني أنت كخبيرة عطور what would they 
so for me personally, if I'm getting ready for a very, yes. uh, you know, gown and all yeah. wedding, I make sure I put incense on my clothes. So the gown, the abaya, the shayla, make sure that's all completely hyped up. I choose a special mkhallat, which is the oils that we use, obviously, that's hand-picked from wherever, yani. Mkhallat on... means a very high, like a very... Concentrated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Concentrated. Okay. So you could smell this a mile away, literally. Okay. Wow. Um, I put that on. I spray another French perfume. It could be one of whatever. It could be an Arcadia perfume. Depending on my mood that evening, spray all of that. Let that all smoke up and linger and kind of mesh well together. And then obviously on top of that, you have, if, I'm, if I want to put musk, I'll put musk behind my ears, on my um, wrists. Yes, uh -huh. wrists. Yeah. And as well as oud. And you use these points because this is where your blood flows the most, behind, behind your ears and your neck, uh, your wrists. And these oh. are places where the scent sticks the most. So you can go for days having the scent stuck over here. And then the bukhur? Bukhur is in the process. You hang everything. <laughs> it's like course. everything is hung. <laughs> and you do the full spraying thing and you add all the oils okay. to it. It's like painting a canvas, literally. Okay. So we answered that. But oh, yeah. okay, she's, she's been all right. I think we have a lot of questions um, about where your stores are, both of you. So oh, yes. I, yeah, so Sai, where is the scent library? Like, I can see like three different questions. Okay, let's start with uh, saying, let's we need the specific, any wide details for you. So, okay. city, uh, location, <laughs> address, <laughs> okay, for the people. We're in Abu, we're in Abu Dhabi. Uh, nation, the Cornish Road, Nation Towers Galleria in this mall. So, we're in the first floor, yeah, in Abu Dhabi, Cornish Road, Nation Tower Galleria, uh, first floor. Okay, uh, we are in St. Regis, Abu Dhabi, Cornish, and we are in Al Watba Resort, Abu Dhabi. Mm. This is okay. in Abu Dhabi, in Ras Al Khaimah, we are in Jilfar Towers. Okay. And in Dubai, we are in Galeria Aviat, the department store in Dubai Mall. And we are opening a new store in Al Goz area, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And how about you, Amna? Where can we find your Arcadia? Arcadia, I'm going to name you just where the flagship store is because we're kind of distributed in a different, like lots of different places. Um, so the main flagship store is in Dar al Wasl, Jum Al Wasl Road. Mm -hmm. And that's the only information I can give you. But if you do enter our, our Instagram account, the details are all there. So, and you can see where so we are Dubai. abroad as well. It's in Dubai, yes. Dubai, Al-Wasl. And we're also stocked in the library. Ah. Okay. So well, all of the places that Saeed's mentioned. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess like we are about to end, but we do have a, maybe two other fun questions before we wrap up. So one is, how would you describe yourself as a scent? I know that we talked a lot about scent being a personality and, you know, a scent being bringing nostalgia and identity. So I know, you know, if you guys can describe yourself as a scent, it doesn't need to be one single one. You know, you could layer them as we talked about. What do you no. Okay, I can say that recently, personally for me, I actually created a scent that actually changes from person to person. Ooh. So, and this is still not out. I'm actually giving you a major, major like spoiler <laughs> alert. But we're still, we, we're actually just working on getting the whole event around it done. So if I wear it, I can smell musky. Mm -hmm. Saeed will wear it. He can smell a bit rudy. Maybe for you guys, it'll be sweet or spicy. I've actually tried it on all of my friends and family members. And on each person, it smells completely different. Same 
same oh. perfume, but smells completely different on everyone. So I think it's kind of like the chameleon scent, I would say. Mm -hmm. But okay. is that a fair answer or should I just be specific to <laughs> something that I like? I mean, it's up to you. I mean, if you think that you can't be defined. That, by that right scent. now, I, I can't I can't be defined. I wouldn't say that I'm, not. I'm right. very in between. Yes, that's a very fair answer. How about you, Saeed? Because I'm a coffee drinker, I go with coffee scent. Coffee. Nobody, I think, knows about coffee scent because there are a lot of fragrances that have coffee scent, mm -hmm. which are very good. So I go with coffee scent because since I started uh, knowing more about fragrances, um, I went, I noticed that there is a coffee scent and I went through and went a lot and I created one scent in coffee too. And it looks, uh, I think this is what I can say coffee coffee yeah i mean i love coffee yeah. as well so i guess oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and inshallah one day we'll try on this perfume inshallah yeah, i mean i tried it i tried it once it's it's, it's amazing that i've not actually... the one that i'm talking about now not no, yet that no, one's, no, 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 that yet. one's no. a special one no. but you i tried, all get, I tried the one it. in rashid's house it was very nice <laughs> when, yes. when will we when should we get ready for the yes. new chameleon we'll call I, I can't tell you that's the thing <laughs> i've already given you too much all right okay. all right we'll just be patient we'll just be patient inshallah one time inshallah soon. inshallah so thank you very much uh, it was such a lovely you know chat we, we we enjoyed a lot we learned a lot it was you know it was such an you know an amazing you know talking to such a wonderful you know emirati uh, you know, lovely. يعني والله تعلمنا وايد منكم and and we did not know that it's you know the perfume industry is such an and lovely وفيها حياة وحيوية وأشياء أكثر ما نحنا ممكن إن نتعلمها وحتى نحنا أكثر الناس ممكن تفتح شركة perfume أو نحنا تعرفون نقدر نفتح شركة طور أو أو أكثر من هالشيء. So at the end, I would like to thank every one of you to you know who joined us today for this creative dialogue. Um, you know, we would like to thank once again. Thank you for the panelists today. Uh, on behalf of the Al Qasimi Foundation, Muassasa Sheikh Saud bin Sabil Al Qasimi, the Princess of the Amma, Nashkurkum Jiddan. We thank you very, very much. Nashkur Jamir, Ali Habru Hadi Wubina. We thank all of the people who. Actually, watch this webinar and we thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.